Welcome to Revlog. I'm it starting. is Holy Week. It is. It's a wonderful week. Is this going to be Easter? Is this, are we? Yeah. <laughs> Brian has asked a number of times. Yeah. Th this is Easter That's week. Right. Brian, Sunday is Easter. Sunday, Sunday. is Easter. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. We do, ha we do have, part of where Brian is going, Aaron has tried to help him understand. We, we do have a unique text for Easter Sunday morning. Just one way of describing it. <laughs> Not the traditional Easter morning text. <laughs> the you know? sin of Aiken. But let's think about it. For Christmas... We had the crucifixion the, of Jesus. So <laughs> exactly the passion of the Christ for Christmas. It's I don't yeah. know. Yeah, so. this is. But we can get there from here. We hey, the word will not return void. So we're we we are going to get from the sin of Achan, mm -hmm. um, and how Joshua uh, deals with this by word of the Lord. Um, we can get from there the resurrection, um, and we we can connect with this um, text of repentance. Yes. Yeah. Um, working through that, so Aaron, why don't why don't you help us get started um, with with this text from Joshua seven? Um, what did you hear? As you well, read? it's important, I think, to you really do need to back up to the beginning of the chapter. I think you need a little bit more context to kind of just because oh, you come into the story and Joshua is you know just weeping and, and wailing and, and um, just in a state of uh, um, repentance, I guess. Um, but there was a battle where they were routed, mm -hmm. and this is not had has not been the case. Uh, the Lord's or army puzzle. lost. The Lord's but also puzzlement. Yeah, not, absolutely. Not yeah. Just, maybe not. I mean, repentance maybe too. But, puzzlement but is it? Yeah, he's just completely. Yeah, because like, yeah, we've everything's gone baffled. gone well for us, and now you know the Lord's army lost, as as you said. Yeah. So what's what's going on here? Um, and so he. And what strikes me is that it, this was sin that happened. You know, Achan took this gold and hid it. He saw something he liked, and he took it. And you know, hey, you know, well, who can who can blame him? And yet, you know, the consequences that, that as that had in the community. And I think that's really where I I was really looking at this text this week is that you know, your sin sometimes will affect you, yes, but often it will affect others and, and the community around you. And those consequences can be can be extraordinary. Yeah, and and here Joshua is, you know, yeah. trying to beseech the Lord, going, you know, what have we done? You know, should we go back to Egypt? Should we should we just scrap all of this? Because, you know, when you know that you're on mission for the Lord and you you've got a plan ahead of you and something just detours it, you know, that's there's a lot of soul searching going, and that's where we pick up the story is, is, is Joshua's soul searching. Yeah, and the um, depth of pain, loss, and grief that sin brings into our life is expon exponentially more than we think or imagine. Mm -hmm. It's always a much deeper pain than we yeah. we, we think it's going to yeah. be in, in um, sin is devastating. And I, I would further say, how important is it for your team to fully understand the scope of your mission? Right. That it is just not incumbent upon you to be a man of God and that, right. you, we, that we expect right. you to follow these commandments and, and, and we're going to watch you do that. But for right. all of us to understand that, that our lives, our mission, our service is all pulling at this rope and, and you know, there are times that, that our own choices are going to impact the whole not just not just the guy at the front of the rope, and right. and that's certainly where we find Aiken. So, how important is it then for us to communicate fully to all those who who we shepherd and who we love and who we care for that that they all matter in this grand scheme that the Lord has called us to? Amen. Uh, Brian, what were your thoughts on Joshua seven? My elders used to say to me, "He is Aiken for a breaking." Okay. Uh, no, they didn't. They did. <laughs> they did. Yes, they did. Back in 1907. <laughs> um, and, and, but it was, it was, you know, near the turn of the century. So give them a break. Um, this is very interesting because the, everything that happens here, the, these people are on the move to a, to a home, mm. to a homeland. Right. And <clears throat> so everything that happens to them is of existential proportions because it, they've got to survive and be a community in order to, to land somewhere. And <clears throat> boy, uh, all along the way, many things threaten to derail that and to just wipe them off the 
map. And this is one of those things. It, it takes on the, the weight of an existential crisis. And so will we exist? You know, are we actually, will there be a nation to, to reach home, you know? And this is no exception. And, and that, uh, we begin, this is not just something, this is not just a funny thing happened on the way to. Mm-hmm. This affects their, their way. This affects whether or not they will ever arrive. Mm. And so um, this is very, very serious. And, and the uh, seriousness of it is compounded by the fact that there is a, that, that secrecy has a corrupting influence on everything it touches. In families, it's the secrets that uh, are really poisonous to a family in a church it's secrets that that keep um, you know certain people in power and other people out of power in a nation same thing um, it, it is it is awful secrecy greed is another thing you know once you reduce um, motives or or goals in life to how it can enrich you or empower you then other people become means to an end it's just it just corrupts everything and and this is part of that existential crisis if they're eaten away uh, on their way to where they're going there will be nothing left and there will be no no home you know and it's a very 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 ominous yeah situation i would also say in aiken's case it's good that he got caught I mean, look at his response when he he does get caught. I mean, he's just completely repentant, and you know, I, I had you know, I saw something pretty, and I and I wanted it, and I took it, you know, but I had no idea the 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 dire consequences that this would, you know, sometimes in our secrecy, in our in our own in our own ways, we'll do things and nobody notices, and then that will lead to you know maybe doing something else, and we are we we begin to just veer off course, mm-hmm. and we can get so far afield, you know, Aiken. His his sin was found out, and and the consequences were were catastrophic. But it was able you have you could have a course correction because the sin was found out. Right. And when there's secrecy, and 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 you and you dodge right. and you hide and you evade, and and it there's something that pulls you off center, but you can't figure out what it is. Yeah. And, and that, exactly. Yeah. Well, that this is the that's the power of secrets is that uh, you're. You're aware of something going wrong, but you you cannot name it. Yeah, and you don't know um, how to come against it. You just feel its effects, and it is it's devastating. Yeah, yeah. Amen. So let's get from here to the cross. Yeah. I think one of the ways we connect this to the cross is uh, the devastation that sin uh, brings in our lives, our churches on on this earth. That that sin is destructive. And God's answer to to that that sin is what happened at the cross. Um, as you think, as you think about this story, how, how are how are you connecting this with Easter Sunday and, and the crucifixion? Either either one. Well, I I think it's important to look that they that they arrive at home, that they get there because mm-hmm. of this this very seminal moment that and others like it. Let's be right. let's be honest that that. There is a moment of of need for confession and need to to write things and and Jesus is that ultimate um, penalty and restoration uh, for the for the for a sin like this that could derail you. But because of Jesus, you have that that um, forever uh, op- opportunity to pivot to to righteousness and, and hope. Yeah. yeah, Amen. What do you think, Br? You know, there's something that is troubling about Aiken's um, words after he's confronted, so, troubling to me, and that is that his his words convey a sense of self-preservation, even in that moment. Hmm. He, what he says is, you have to understand how mesmerized I was by this. Uh, it's like a defense of his own actions. Yeah, he, yeah. He's yeah, still correct. defending himself. He's still there's still an apology, uh, an apology in the sense of a defense. Yes, yeah. 
there, he's saying, you, you know, I, I'm even, you know, he's saying I'm weak. I, I was mesmerized. You know, you got to understand how, it, you know, this had a pull on me, you know, rather than just saying this is wrong. Yeah. And I have caused so much shame. It is wrong. Jesus gets to the bottom of that. Yeah. He offers no excuses. Uh, he was silent before Pilate like a lamb, bef- you know, before his shearers is dumb. So yeah. this lamb of God is dumb. And he was led to the slaughter. And he, Jesus offered no words. There were enough words. It was just, here's my life. This is not what we see in Achan. Hmm. It's right. what we see in Jesus. Yeah. Amen. And may that be realized in our lives mm-hmm. um, in the Christ. Aaron, a question of, of the text? Well, see, I just look at that differently in that I, I feel almost that there is a lack of good leadership to communicate. Um, and perhaps, you know, did Achan understand completely his actions were uh catastrophic that could lead to catastrophic uh, and you know, when you communicate clearly and and you've laid all those things out it doesn't give an opportunity to to deviate like i knew i knew what i should should have done and i didn't do it mm-hmm. that's different than i you know i just saw something i liked and 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 so i took it and you know i'm sorry that i did that um, so i i'm looking at the leadership going you know did we communicate clearly our expectations and our needs and, and, and all the things that the Lord given us. So that, so as I think about those that I'm called to shepherd, you know, am I clearly sharing with them the vision that God has given me uh, to, to lead, to, to, to serve, to, to do all the things so that we can all be without excuse. Yeah. Amen. Brian, what, what question do you have out of the text? Well, what are the reasons that I'm offering as a defense of, mm my own yeah. shortcomings yeah. and failures um, and what will it take for me to to um, trust God with getting to the bottom mm-hmm. of my own sin yeah. yeah yeah amen and it's only through Jesus Christ that we're going to get there that's right <laughs> we would love to hear your thoughts too on this Easter Sunday text if you'd comment below.